scientists have found a great similarity between fluid dynamics and the wave particle duality of quantum mechanics. They set up an experiment of an oil filled tray placed on a vibrating surface. When a drop of the same fluid is dropped into the surface of the vibrating fluid, the presence of an air film between the surface and the droplet does not allow the droplet to dissolve into the fluid. Thus, the droplet bounces on the surface of the fluid, rather than simply losing its shape upon impact. This bouncing droplet produces waves on the surface, and these waves cause the droplet to move along the surface. This system was used to reproduce one of the most famous experiments in quantum mechanics called the double slit experiment. The bouncing droplet can represent the particle nature of the photon or electron and the waves on the surface of the fluid can represent the wave nature that can go through both slits at the same time. The droplet can go through either slit when the fluid strikes the barrier with the two slits it will emerge on the other side forming waves. Where the crest of those waves interacts they form a large wave. Where a crest interacts with a trough they cancel each other out. Over a period of time a group of pressure sensors will register an interference pattern on the back screen in the form of a series of alternating light and dark bands indicating where the waves reinforced or cancelled each other out. It is interesting that even if the bouncing droplet represents a whole atom surrounded by an electron probability cloud, the atom can go through either slit with the probability cloud going through both forming an interference pattern. And this can take place in just three dimensions over a period of time without the extra dimensions of string theory or the parallel universes of U. Everett's many worlds interpretation. This is not the only similarity fluid dynamics has with quantum mechanics. If two droplets are placed on the surface of fluid that is vibrating, the droplets were found to orbit each other just as in the case of quantized orbits. The two droplets maintained discrete values of distance between each other and were held in stable configuration. Also, there is a great similarity with a quantum experiment that involves confining electrons in a circular corral. Instead of electrons, bouncing droplets were used on a circular tray that was vibrating the fluid. The waves generated by bouncing droplets reflected off the circular tray wall. This restricted the droplet within the circle. The droplet and the wave interfered with each other to create motion that appeared to be totally random, but over time it proved to favor certain regions over another. It was found most frequently near the center of the circle, then with slowly diminishing frequency in concentric rings whose distance from each other was determined by the wavelength of the wave. This is almost identical to the quantum experiment using electrons. If we break the experiment of bouncing droplets down into individual parts and ask ourselves what each part could represent in the quantum world of the atoms, it could give us a greater picture or understanding of quantum mechanics. We know that the universe is never at absolute zero, therefore there is always the spontaneous absorption and emission of photon energy, forming photon oscillations or vibrations. This process will naturally form the continuous vibrating surface of the tray in the experiment. We know that light has momentum and momentum is frame dependent. Also we know that the light photon forms a movement of charge 
with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields relative to the atoms of the periodic table. Therefore, the droplets can represent a photon, electron, or an atom within its own reference frame, and the waves can represent electromagnetic waves, with charge being an innate part of all matter. In this theory, the future is unfolding photon by photon, with each photon-electron coupling, or dipole moment, with the movement of charge and the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields. The extra dimensions of string theory are just possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional interactive universe. Classical physics is based on quantum physics and they both represent different aspects of the same process with the mathematics of quantum mechanics representing the physics of time as a physical process with classical physics representing processes over a period of time as in Newton's differential equations. It is no accident that fluid dynamics can mimic quantum mechanics. It is because all fluids are based on quantum mechanics. Water is a perfect example of this, with hydrogen bonds breaking and forming, with the exchange of photon energy relative to the environment that the water is flowing in. In this theory, this represents the future unfolding, photon by photon, within the water. Just a change in environmental temperature can cause the atoms to bond together with the process forming the uncertainty needed for infinite snowflake diversity. In this theory, even the spherical nature of the bouncing droplet with its convexed outer surface and concaved inner surface represents something fundamental in the symmetry of the geometrical process that forms quantum mechanics. This can be seen in experiments done in zero gravity where fluid will naturally form a sphere. On the International Space Station experiments have been done with an air bubble within a water sphere. The air bubble and water sphere is connected to a speaker cone and it was found that different frequencies form different types of standing waves on the surface of the air bubble. The beauty of this interactive process can be seen when cello music is played, small droplets formed from the surface of the bubble and bounced around in the three-dimensional space inside the bubble relative to the vibrations of the music. The important thing about this is that it is not just an interactive process, but it has also naturally gone from being a two-dimensional process, unfolding on the surface of vibrating fluid, to a three-dimensional process. To explain quantum mechanics we need a three-dimensional process, and spherical geometry gives us this. These images from the International Space Station show a candle flame in zero gravity naturally forming a sphere that is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. In this theory, the two-dimensional surface of the sphere forms an interactive boundary condition with the concaved inner surface of the sphere representing negative charge and the outer convex surface representing positive charge. We have a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. A prime example of this is photon energy cascading down from the Sun, forming greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization with a built-in potential for ever greater symmetry formation that we see in the complexity and diversity of cell life. We see the exchange of photon energy and the movement of charge relative to the membrane of each living cell. The main effect this process of energy exchange has on us is the aging process, but it is above all a creative process with each photon oscillation or vibration only occurring once, 
but the process of energy exchange is continuously forming the potential for the ever-changing world of our everyday life. Or in other words, it is forming what we see and feel as a passage or continuum of time. This is a totally interactive process relative to the atoms of the periodic table, with the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.